Hello everyone, hope you're doing alright, hope you're keeping safe, hope you're keeping sane. Today I want to talk about identifying a gambling addict, identifying a problem gambler. Now what I will say is this video is not going to be so much about identifying other people and being able to spot someone who might be a problem gambler or might be struggling with gambling addiction, but it'll be more about identifying yourself as a potential problem gambler, as a problem gambler, as a gambling addict, or as someone who has the propensity, the chance, the opportunity, the likelihood of developing a problem with gambling in the future. Now, the reason I think it's important to look at this and look at identifying ourselves as a problem gambler is because for many years during the early stages of my addiction, if someone had asked me if I had a problem with gambling, I would have said no. And Obviously, a lot of people who do have a problem with gambling and who know they have a problem with gambling will deny it. That's because we are sometimes in denial, but also because we are ashamed and we don't want to confess to what we see as a weakness in ourselves personally and a weakness in our willpower and a weakness in our resolve to control something that we simply cannot control. But if someone had asked me early on, uh, maybe for the first few years of what I deemed to be my first period of problem gambling, I would have said, no, I'm absolutely fine. Yes, I'm a gambler. Yes, I gamble fairly regularly, but I have it under control. I'm not a gambling addict. I'm not a problem gambler. You know, I don't need help. And the famous line that we hear so much with so many different problems and addictions and compulsions, which is, I could stop any time that I wanted. Blimey, it must be one of the biggest lies we've ever tell ourselves as, as addicts of any form, isn't it? That we can stop at any time we want. But the, the truth was, I didn't identify myself as a problem gambler. I didn't see myself as someone who had a, a, ga a gambling addiction. I saw myself as someone who gambled occasionally. And yes, sometimes I would lose. Sometimes I would lose a little bit more than maybe I'd originally planned to, or certainly that I would have wanted to. But the way I see it, that was just kind of part and parcel. Sometimes I would even blame other factors. I've talked lots about blame in, in you know, past videos. Maybe I had a particularly stressful day, so I'd sort of earned the right to that bit of gambling, that bit of relaxation, that bit of escapism that uh, gambling, like all other addictions, does afford you. So why is it so important that I retrospectively could have identified myself as a problem gambler at this point? Well, I think the answer is obvious, isn't it? Because the further down the line of addiction you go, the further you perpetuate the addiction, the further you, you know, the longer you allow it to thrive and ingrain itself in you and become such a substantial, powerful part of your life, then of course the harder it is to break that cycle, to break that habit, and start to t return to some form of normality, start to get back old sort of mental habits, and start to get back the appreciation of other things outside of gambling and also of course the appreciation of money the further we go down the gambling road the more recovery we have um the, sorry the more recovery is really required before we start getting a sort of an inkling of normality back and the also we the more damage we can do you know the longer we gamble not just financial damage of course the longer you gamble because ultimately you're always going to lose you go from having money to having no money to having debt and obviously, the longer that drags on, the less money you have, or the longer your skin, or the more debt you have, regardless, you know, depending on uh, depending on the period of time over which you gamble. The problem is when it comes to identifying ourselves as problem gamblers, is we have in our mind, as we do with all addictions, a dangerous stereotype. And whilst we don't conform to this stereotype, we can go on with our lives, we can go on gambling, we can go on practicing and accelerating in many ways this dangerous habit, you know, safe we feel in the knowledge that, well, we're not that guy, are we? We're not that guy. And when we think about a problem gambler, I have spoken about stereotypes before, but we do have a stereotype in our head. Now, I don't know about you, but my just to give you an insight, my idea of a gambling addict stereotype would be an older guy, probably 50s, 60s maybe, maybe 40s, but looking older, you know, looking dishevelled, poorly kept, you know, probably smells a bit, wearing a coat that's far too old and long overdue a dry clean, in a bookies, 
swearing at the horses on the telly, screwing up betting slips, looking a bit sweaty, looking a bit tired and looking a bit desperate because they've just bet and lost their bottom dollar. They've done their crust. They've done their bollocks. That was my my stereotype. That was my image. That's what I believed an addicted problem gambler to be. What And I, I could distance myself from that. You know, I was showered. I was clean. I had a you know, an expensive coat on. I didn't lose all my money. I wasn't there swearing. I was keeping my resolve. I was keeping calm. I was keeping my focus. I was, you know, I looked, I believed, to the outside world as someone who had everything under control. But the fact that I was in that bookies, I was playing that fob tea, I was putting note after note after note in, it doesn't matter how much I pretended to myself that I could afford this. It doesn't matter, certainly, to the, how much I pretended to the outside world that I could afford this. All the explanations, all the declarations of, oh, it's only money, isn't it? Or, oh, well, just not my day. Or all these things, all these lies, all these lines that we come out with to cover up the fact that inside we're hurting. Inside we know that we're causing ourselves financial harm and we know that we are spending time and money that we don't have or we can't afford or almost certainly we should be spending elsewhere but we cover it up with lines like it's only money or oh it's just a bit of fun or you can't take it with you that's another one isn't it we hear that all the time from gambling addicts who just want to excuse their habit and want to live in a world of denial where they're not ready to admit that they're they're not too far away from that degenerate rock bottom gambler that we picture as your stereotype. Look at alcohol. If we picture, if we talk about, think about an alcoholic, what do we think about? Well, we think about the same kind of looking guy, don't we? Normally an old boy on a park bench, you know, drinking a bottle of whiskey or a bottle of cheapest wine out of a brown paper bag, you know, living on the streets or at the very least living in poverty living in you know a real deprived state you know not looking after themselves and basically pretty much if we're honest at, at death's door there's millions of problem drinkers and probably hundreds of thousands of alcoholics here in the UK and there's certainly not hundreds of thousands of these people who fit this stereotype so where are all the rest well like gamblers they're amongst us so like gamblers they're in the, they're in society they're in the community and they are also doing a job of covering up their addiction. And again, like, like um, gambling, alcohol and alcoholism and problem drinking also has its fair share of cover all, explain all, get out of jail free kind of slogans. You know, oh, it's five o'clock somewhere. Oh, I've had a stressful day. Oh, it's wine o'clock. It's beer o'clock. You know, just one won't hurt. All these things, all these things that alcoholics or problem drinkers will tell themselves to you know brush off the fact they could be in a lot of trouble with this addiction so like I say with gamblers if we wait if we sit back and we wait until we match that stereotype that we believe singles us out or will single us out as a problem gambler by that stage it's not irrecoverable but it's a lot lot further to recover than it would be if we actually addressed it when we see the signs of problem gambling. So what do I mean by the signs of problem gambling? Well, retrospectively, it's so obvious. I was spending money that I could afford, but would have liked to have spent on other things, but it was going on gambling. I was spending time gambling when there were other things that I could have been doing, things that would have been more enjoyable, more sociable, more beneficial to myself. It may be a little bit more dull, but more beneficial to me long term. Building a business, working hard, you know, doing a bit of overtime. Maybe not so much that, of course, but you know, doing things that I would have enjoyed so so much more. I was gambling when I wasn't enjoying it. I was spending my most precious resource, time. I was also spending money, doing something that I was getting little to no happiness little to no enjoyment from I was getting gratification from it. it was scratching an itch and it was providing me with detachment it was providing me with um, isolation it was providing me with a comfort zone so I was getting something from it in that respect but I was using time and money that I didn't really want to spend on that on that 
And that should have been a key sign that I was developing a, a gambling problem, which would have gone on, of course, to become much, much more serious. This is something that's so important, particularly with gambling, where there are very, very few outward symptoms that other people can pick up on. And by the time we get to the outward symptom stage, like the guy in the bookies that I you know, imagine in my head as the ultimate gambling addict, by the time we get to the, the stage where you know, it's obvious to the people around us that we have a problem, then we have a real problem. We have a serious problem, and it's going to be very, very hard to come back from. But be it on your guard. If you have yet to stop gambling, just be on your guard and keep an eye out for the next time you find yourself gambling but you don't enjoy it. Or you find yourself not wanting to buy a new pair of trainers or whatever. Or something that you know, you'd know you normally want to spend your money on but instead you're spending the same amount gambling. Or you should be going out with friends. Or you are out with friends, you know, as and when that can happen again. And instead of sitting there enjoying a, a chat and a catch up and a bit of banter for a word I absolutely hate. Instead of sitting there at the end of the table with your mates, having a laugh, watching the football, doing whatever, you're on the fruit machine. Or you're too ingrained in the football. You know, it might be like Fulham, Sheffield United or something that nobody really cares about. Sorry if you're a Fulham or a Sheffield United fan. But you're watching it intently because you've got a bet on it. You're detached from the world around you. And if you find that detachment, if you find you're not getting involved and you're not enjoying what you should be enjoying, that is a red flag. That is a warning sign that you're on that slope to problem gambling and to serious gambling addiction. Don't wait until you become the stereotype. Don't wait until you become that bloke in the bookies. Like if you're a drinker and you find yourself drinking too much, don't wait until you're on that park bench with that cheap whiskey before you realise that actually I could be in trouble here. Let's do something about this because the earlier you catch it, the less damage you'll do to you, your finances, to the people around you and the easier it is to get back to a place of relative normality, something that's taken me... 18 months plus and counting. I always say I don't really count and I'm still working on it. Thanks as always for watching. I hope this video is helpful. Please do stay safe. Please stay sane. Please stay gamble free. I just very quickly notice, although I mention it again in another video because a lot of people won't be watching, Halifax are now offering you the opportunity to block gambling transactions. So if you've got a Halifax account, get on the app. It's there under the settings. Uh, it's there under, I think, safety and security where you can freeze your card if you lose it. Go in there. You can block gambling transactions. I actually have an older Halifax account, which I've done it on anyway, even though I don't use it just because well, it's an extra, extra security net, isn't it? All right. Take it easy, guys, and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers for watching.